so let's begin. Uh, last time we did a quick review of recursion, and then we went on to objects, JavaScript objects. Today we'll do a review again of recursion, <laughs> then of objects, and then we'll move on and talk about arrays, which are basically a way of defining lists in, in, in JavaScript. Uh, in programming languages in general, actually. Okay, so first, back to recursion. Let's solve a problem. Suppose I wanted to uh, give you, hmm, what should I give you? What's a fun one? I know, I got one. Suppose I wanted to give you a string, like ABC, and I want, what I want back is A1, B1, C1. In other words, what I want you to do is to return back a string that is the same string I gave you, but there is a one between each character. You guys follow that? In other words, the input would be something like, you know, whatever, a bunch of letters, right? And the output would be Z1, B1, A1, S1. Actually, I got a better one. Instead of a one, why don't we specify the position of that. So it would be B2, A3, S4. So the input is this. The output that I want from the box, that I want returned from the function, is this. Got it? OK. In other words, let's create a function. Const, I don't know what to call this one. Um, F, fine. <laughs> Which will take a string. We will then call it with a string, const result, and the result should be, console.log, result should be triple equals to the string here. So right now we get false. Why? What is result in this context? What does the function return? In other words, when you run it, what does it get replaced with? The thing it returns, which is, right? And the undefined goes in here, and of course undefined is not equal to that, therefore you get false in the console. Fine. Um, by the way, what is this? What is console? It's an object that contains a key called log, where the value of that key is a function that we can call. Remember that? We will get back to that later, don't worry. OK, so now I have this string, great. And what I want to do is first create a termination case. Um, so first of all, if you notice, there's this number right, that keeps increasing. Yes? So what I need to do is keep track of a number. But I don't have a number here. So why don't I create another function, an internal function, f2, which will take a string and a number, like i. I can be a number, or I can call it num if I want, whatever, num. OK, good. I will then call f2 with a stir and whatever the first number I want to be. What is the first number I want to be? One. Good, OK. So here what we will do, actually let's have it be the indexes. That would be easier. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and here let's pass 0. This will make it even easier. So here what we want to do is if num is greater than or equal to what? When do we want to stop? We're going to keep increasing num by 1. String length. Wait, minus 1, I'm sorry. Yes, 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 you're right, minus 1. Then we want to stop. Let's just return for now. Here what we want to do is we want to return stir num. If we just run this, wait, and let's return the result of that. Actually, huh, let's not. Wait, let me make this smaller. OK, there are a few problems with what we did. First, if you call f with zbas, it will go in here. You make a function, fine. You call that function with a string zbas and zero. First of all, what would this function return? What is it? Z. Look, string comes in here, right? 
which is ZBAS, we return the num index. What is the index at this time? Zero. zero. Good. Zero goes in here. So what we're returning is stir zero. And what is the zero index of ZBAS? Z. Very good. OK, in other words, this just turns into the string Z. What is then set into this variable, into the result variable? What is this function returning? Nothing. Look, there's no return here. Forget about this function for a moment. What am I returning? Nothing. And what is nothing in JavaScript? Undefined. That, it, that means this then gets replaced with, and therefore the result is undefined. With me? Good. So the first thing that we could do to fix this problem is to maybe at least return the result of what F2 returns. What will the result be in this case? Z. Look. We go into F with ZBAS. So in fact, let's use the debugger. One second. What is this? Uno momento. Uh, what's happening? Const F function string debugger. It's not working. All right. Inchi match but the other script. Inchi match. No, 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 no. Oh, here we go. It just broke. It worked. Okay. Wait, wait, one moment. Yeah, uh, all right, whatever, don't worry. OK, let's just do it manually. So we call f with zbas. zbas goes into stir. That is to say, at this point here, stir is the same thing as zbas, the text. Right? Then we create this function. We call f2 with zbas and 0. So when we go in here, the stir has what value in it? ZBAS. What does num have right now? Good. Is num greater than or equal to the length of stir? That is to say the length of ZBAS minus 1. No. What is the length of ZBAS? 4 minus 1 would be 3. And of course, num is not greater than or equal to 3. Um, OK, so then we say return stir, that is to say ZBAS, index of 0. Therefore, that returns the first thing in the first index, z. So this whole function just returns a z. Then this then returns that z, and therefore result contains z. Yes? Actually, this should be, oops, no, Siri, go away. <laughs> OK. It should actually be this. But let's leave the error for now, and then we'll see why that's wrong later. Um, is it clear why result is now z? This is clear? OK. So why don't, but what we want isn't just the first. First of all, then now let's concatenate this with a what? With a num to get z0. Not bad, right? We're, we're getting there. We have the first part. But we have to now do it again for the next letter, right? So we want to do this whole thing, that is to say, take the, the character at some index, concatenate with the index itself, again for the next one. So what do we do? So we can do plus F2 again stir, but this time we want num plus 1. We want to move on to the next index. Z0, B1, A2, and then undefined. But first of all, a few things. First of all, there's undefined. How do we cure that problem? 
Return, not empty space, empty string. Empty space would still add a space, right? We don't need it. OK, better. There's still a problem. Remove minus one. Minus one. Exactly. We're stopping too soon, right? Um, we want to stop and do nothing once you've gone beyond the indexes. Length minus one is a legal index. It's length that is already outside of the, OK, look. So if you do A, B, C, length is 3, right? Dot length is 3. With me? So, but this is the 0 index, this is the 1 index, this is the 2 index. The 3 is, or, three is already nothing. There's nothing there. So by the time we get to that last length, we want to stop. So 0 is OK, 1 is OK, 2 is OK, 3, stop. With me? OK, so in that case, you're right that we could also do um, that. Or we could do length minus 1, but have changed this to be greater than. You guys see how it's the same thing? OK. And voila, z0, b1, a2, s3. Notice something interesting. I said that the function has to take a string. But to do what we want to do, we needed a second argument. So I just made another function. And then I used that function. And I had that simply return the result of calling this internal function. Why didn't we do it this way? Um, and then put all of this inside of f. This also works, right? Why didn't I do it that way? Exactly. I'm forcing the user of my function to now somehow know that he needs to pass like some index, whatever that might be. Why? The user doesn't care. The user just wants to give me a string and get back a string with numbers in between. They don't care about any additional information. That, the fact that we're using a num variable to do this extra work should be abstracted away from the user of our function. In the same way that when you hit the gas pedal of your car, you're abstracted away by the complexity inside the hood. You just press the gas and it goes. You're not going to go press the gas but also connect some wires because it requires it. The wires are connected inside the hood. Same thing here. If you want to do extra work, do it. But don't force the user to know about it. Understood? OK, you guys are beginning to see this, hopefully. The whole idea of programming is exactly this. You make these functions that do things. Inside, you have a bunch of code. That code can call another function that does something. And inside of that, there's a bunch of code. And so on and so on. And in this way, you build out complexity. OK? okay. Um, should we continue with the rec with review of recursion, or do you think you have it figured out? OK, let's do one more. One more. Let's do const f function. Let's have this function. Let's write the factorial function. OK, this is like a typical one, but I w want you to actually understand what's happening. Yes? Input the bajanuma maseria. I think in. Height is bajanuma maseria. Oh, you mean I give it like a ten, and it takes some percentage of that? That's just ma that's just division, and then you just pass that to another function that gives you back some text for you to draw. I don't. So the reason why I don't, look, listen, this is really important. If you guys understand functions, you can then use them to build really complicated things. So there's no point in me giving you examples of complicated things. Once you understand the basics, all, all a complicated thing is just more functions. So I want you to understand the basics. Once you get that, building out complexity is actually easy. You just keep writing functions. A function calls a function. That calls a function. And you just keep doing But each function is actually simple. 
It's adding them together that then produces something amazing, that produces your operating system or Facebook or Halo, right? It's adding those functions together that creates complexity. So let's talk about just one function, just to keep it simple, yeah? Um, and then you can come to office hours and we can play. Um, okay, so let's write the factorial function. So what is a factorial? Again, if you, if you recall, f 5 factorial is the same thing as 5 times 4 factorial. Uh, but we wrote this function. We did, but let's review it just one more time. If you, if, so everyone knows factorial? Who does not? If I just gave you a quiz now and I said write the factorial function recursively, no problem? Yeah. Yes. Really? Yes. Okay, so if you understand factorial, why is reverse difficult? The idea is exactly the same if you think about it. All you're doing is you're still recursing, you're still iterating, changing an index, except you're starting with the, the index that is length minus one of the string and decrementing it each time and concatenating that string to the next one. So you concatenate, so all you're doing when you're reversing, if you have, if I give you A, B, C, D, is you're taking D plus, then moving it here. Next index is one mi minus one, right? So this one, plus C plus decrement it again. B plus decrement it again. A plus, anything left? Empty string, plus empty string. This is your termination case. There you go, you have a reverse string. This is where I don't understand. You, you can't say factorial is easy, but I don't understand how to reverse a string because they're not that different. Should I continue with an example in recursion or move on to objects? Hands up if you want help with recur if you want me to continue with recursion. Okay, that's like a third of you. Okay, one more example and we move on. And if you guys need more help, please come to office hours. Fair? Okay. For, okay, not, not factorial. Okay, let's do another one. Can I do one? And if we, if we give the number to our function and it gives its divisors. A function and it gives its divisors. That is to say things that are evenly divisible? Like 24, when we when we give 24, we we'll, we should get one, two, uh, four, six. Right. Okay. Fine. Let's do that. So first of all, forgetting about functions for a moment, let's just talk math. How do I know if I just have a number, num? How do I know all of its divisors? How can I know? Modular. Right, if you guys recall, the modulo operator tells us if there is a remainder, right? If you divide something with that number, is there a remainder? So if I wanted to know is, let's say, is it divisible by 3? All I have to do is do modulo 3 and check to see if, there, if it's equal to 0. If it is, evenly divisible. If not, then there is a remainder. It is not evenly divisible. The math is clear? Any questions about the math part? Okay, good. So now let's actually write a function. Fine. Uh, so const evenly div. Whatever, fine. Um, div, div, whatever. D, uh, D fine. Um, okay, so we get a num. And we're going to call our, oh, it's too, too ed. Ah, uh, oh, function. Thank you, everyone. You guys are awesome. Evenly divisible 24, the example you gave, sir. And then that's going to give us some result. Ah, but there's an issue. How do, oh, we know objects now, but we don't have arrays, which are lists of things. I know. Let's quickly learn what an array is and then use it for this. An array is really easy. It's really easy. So let's learn it because we're going to learn it today anyway and then use it to solve this problem. Mwah. Okay, good. Bene. Okay, what is an array? If you recall an object, 
was used to attach key value pairs, to store key value pairs, right? You give it a key and a value, and later you give it a key, you get a value. Remember this? An array is exactly that, but the keys are numbers, and it has order. Specifically, the numbers are from 0 until some other value. So, for example, how do I make an array? Uh, let's call it A, whatever. The way, remember, this is how you make an object, remember? That's how you make an array. In an array, if I wanted to store something, remember, uh, in an object, I would do A dot, you know, name is Joe, right? In an array, what I do instead is I open a bracket and give an index like 0, and I say Joe. A1 would be Mike. A2 would be, whoop, would be, um, Boros, yes. Console.log A will give us that list. Okay, question. Those of you who paid attention in objects, how, how do I get Mike out of A? Bam, bam. Boom. How do I get Boros out of it? What will happen if I put 10 instead of a 2 or a 9? Ah, hey, that's cool. Guess what? A has a length just like a string. What do you think length of A is? Think of it this way. Length is the last index plus one. Make sense? The last index plus one. Okay, another thing I can do, by the way, is instead of putting them one by one, as you recall, for an object, we could do this, right? Right off the bat, we could say, you know, name is Joe, you know, email is, you know, whatever at gmail.com. We could initialize it with a whole bunch of data, and then later, blah, 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 later we could modify it. We could say b.name is actually Mike. That would change Joe to Mike. You remember this? Yeah. Well, with an array, it's the same thing. We can initialize our array, Mike. There you go. Now I have these three values in there. If I want another one, a index of, let's see, 0, 1, 2, 3. Mm, uh, Hovik. And if I, instead of doing length, I were to just print it, you get Joe, Mike, Bogos, and Hovik. It's a list of things. Now notice I said of things, not of strings. We can put anything we want in here. We can put numbers. Let's have it be one, two, three, and Hovik, yes? In the previous example, say, uh, or in this one, say I want to add, I want to add Hovik in the beginning, to the, end, uh, to the beginning. Ah, there is a Miropa. Uh, what was the name of the function? There, okay, wait, wait, I'll get to that in a second. Because the, ob the array has functions that you can use, which we haven't discussed yet, but we will soon. Okay? God, there's a function you call and it pushes in the middle, in front. Okay, so listen. This list can be a list of anything. It can be a list of lists. Watch this. One, two, three. Another one. Four, five, six. Okay, question. If I were to do A of zero, what would I get? I would get this value here, which is an array containing one, two, three. Right? Okay, so how do I access five? Okay, let's get rid of Hovik for a second. A1. Boom. 
Is that making sense? Notice though in objects we could use dot notation, right? Or bracket notation. For arrays you can only use bracket notation. Because you, numbers are not legal, you can't do dot zero. You have to do bracket zero. Go. Yeah, you can look. You mean like that? Yeah. Ah, it's make a denk miha it's a mihatova nank che. Che. No. Okay, question. Let me give you a more interesting one. Yes, you can put functions in here. Absolutely. Watch this. Let's have this array, which a, store a number like a one, a boolean like true, a string like Mike, an object, now okay we'll talk about objects later, a function which returns three. How do I call this function? How do I call that function? Boom. Wow. Wow, it's magic. Making sense? Look, this is the array. This will get the value that is stored at the third index. So 0, 1, 2, 3, that's this here. And then we call this function. And we get back a 3. It returns a 3. With me? OK. Now let's have an array of arrays. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, an array, 8. Ha, ha, ha. Then have that array have um, True, false, and high. And an array. <laughs> of nine and ten. Now, <laughs> um, how do I get ten? Okay, so let's solve it a little bit at a time. A3, not A3, A2, zero index, one index, two index. And then we get the second index, so one, zero, one. Wait, zero, one, yep. Okay. And now within this, zero index, one index, two index. Wait, we wanted 10, right? OK, that's zero index, that's one index. Not bad. Not bad at all. OK, one more, and then we'll, so you see how easy arrays are, right? Just, does someone say no again? <laughs> By the way, um, how can I delete an, a value of an index? Guess. Look, see how it's empty? Because there's nothing there. It printed this, and then it printed nothing because I deleted it. It doesn't exist. What the Mitch do you still have a you still have an index, but it's empty. Look, when you have your array, right? Okay, let's make it easier. You have this array. 
Suppose I did this. Forget about removing for a second. If I did a uh, 4 is 8, what does this mean? Index, the key number 4 has a value of 8. What does index 0 have? What does index 2 have? What does index 1 have? Nothing, 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 A. Uh, 8, sorry. Right? What is the what? Huh? Why it's not printing undefined? Because the, the part of the code that, that is writing it, if it's undefined, it just does nothing. That's just how it's implemented. One second. Yeah, exactly. If I were to do this, what is the length of A? Right, the last index plus one. So this, that means this array now has 500 spots of which 499 of them are undefined, nothing, but the last one has eight. Go. If after this we delete A499, uh -huh. will it still print nothing or 500 nothing? Let's do a smaller one so we don't crash the system. If we do delete A9, and then we console.log A, we still get, right, because you had an array with empties. Bam, bam, you still have the array. Yeah. OK. So, yes. In Trajan. <laughs> yeah, if you, OK. If you have. A and you set the index of 4 to 6, right? Uh, A of 0 is going to be undefined, right? Fine. Now, if I delete, for some reason, if I delete A of 0, it's still going to give you the same thing. Because you're deleting a key that does not exist, so it's a no op. Nothing happens. Go. Can we use this in the homework? Can you use this in the homework? Yeah, fine. I have no idea, but sure, yeah, fine. Yes. Oh, yeah, you can't call, you can't, okay, no, remember, I said you have to use recursion. Yes, we know that there is a reverse function you can just call. Yeah, we're not stupid. But that's not recursion, so don't, don't use it. Yes, you can use arrays, but you have to reverse it yourself. Okay. I'll say, John. You take console log R? Sense? True. Okay, you can, yeah, I'll, I'll show you in a moment. Wait. So soon I will show you how you can. Okay, here's what you can do make your own string. Uh, no. I need to teach you how to loop over an array. Oh, we know. We have recursion. OK, now, now by the way, before we get to your, your thing, watch this. Suppose we have an array with um, 1, 2, 3, and 4. I want to write a function that will print every value in this array. How do I do that? No, no, no. One at a time. Like one, then two, then three, then four. Exactly. I need a loop, right? I need to do for this print, this print, this print, this print, that stop. So what do I need? Print array. And let's call print array with A. Now, let's pass the array. We get the array here. Uh, what else? We need some sort of an index, right, that moves. That's another value. So let's create our own function, const f that takes r and num, or index. 
By the way, in programming, oftentimes people index. So if you see I, usually it means index. OK. So then we want to uh, return f of r and it, zero index. You know what? Instead of printing, why don't we create the string that we then want to print? Follow? OK. So r i would be the first one, right? That would be 1. We want to concatenate that with like a comma space. And then, uh, wait, before we do the infinite thing, let's make a termination case. What's our termination case? You can do that. That's fine, right? Same thing. Let's just return then. OK. Then let's return that. What will, uh, now let's console log the result of that. Interesting. I get a 1 with a comma next to it. Why? Right, because think about it. I pass A, which is the array. I then call my f with that array and 0. So this is the array, this is 0. Is 0 equal to array.length? No. no. So I come here and I take the i index of array, which is 1, and I concatenate it with comma space. And that is what is returned. So what's returned is 1 plus comma space. And then I return that. So I get here this. That's what I get. Are you with me? Yes. Good. OK, so obviously we want to do more than that. We want to do something like this again for the next index, right? So how do I do that? And then? I plus 1. Ooh, getting better. OK. By the way, I'll answer the question about how to get rid of commas in one moment. Um, OK, cool. All right. Mm, but there's a few problems here. How do I fix them? Why am I getting undefined here? OK, better. Mm, still one more small issue, which is this trailing comma. Right? So I don't want to, I don't want to do that unless there is another step. So how can I fix it? You tell me. If uh, minus 1, r length minus 1, return, uh, uh, return uh, r, r uh, length minus 1. Minus 1, return r brackets and length minus 1. I can also do i. It's the same thing, right? OK, boom, very nice. You see how that worked? We went one less, and we just returned that value, which was concatenated with the comma. Very cool. Now, question. If the array had missing values in it, we would get that. Now, a question was, first of all, how come we don't get undefineds? That was a question that was posed in this area. It's because the, the function that prints it does this. If r i is undefined, then do the same thing, but don't print it. Instead, print an empty string, or don't print a string at all. OK. Now another question was, how do we get rid of the commas that we don't need? OK. Don't print a comma. <laughs> Starting to make sense now? OK. Are you sure? All right. Good. So what's a fun little exercise we can do? Ah, I know. Uh, we have an array. 
of, oh, now objects. So quick review of, uh, no, I'm sorry, let's answer your question. Yes, yes, yes. Now let's find all the divisors. Huh? Okay, so uh, const, uh, whatever, div divisors, these. Um, it's going to take a number. We are then going to create an internal function because we need to check against num, num minus one, num minus two, and all these numbers to see which is divisible, right, into num evenly, right? So what we do is we create another function, const f, which takes the num and, and the divisor. We will call f with num, and the first divisor will be num because 24 is divisible by 24, right? And then we'll check 24 by 23. 24 divided by 23, 24 divided by 22, 24 divided by 21, blah, 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 all the way until we get to zero. Fair? Okay. So uh, here, we need a termination case. When do we stop checking? When div, if div is equal to zero, this is where we're going to stop. Okay. Here we will loop. So we will check if num is modulo div is equal to zero. If that is the case, then we want to store div somewhere. Watch this. A is an array, right? Let's store it inside the array. What we want to do is add it to the end of the array, right? Are you with me? Okay, so how do we add it to the end of the array? Uh, let's push, but don't worry about that. You can do A of, anyone? Without length, minus one. Plus one. Plus one. Any others? What is, if the array is empty, what is the length? Zero. Where should we store it? Zero. Okay. If the length is one, where should we store the last one? Index what? Index one. Otherwise, we'll override zero. Okay, so what that means is we want to store here. Div. Look. If you have an array with, with, sorry, with one, two, three, I want to add a value here at the end. What is the length? Four, no, no. What is the length? Three. What is this index that I want to add to? Three. This is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three. So the length is the place where we want to add the new value. Haskatsak? So after we're done checking, we call f again with num and what? Div minus 1. And then when we're done, we simply return a. And then we console log A. Oh, something happened. Oh, Oh, you're right. Duh. Sorry. Uh, we need to call DS with uh, 24, right? There you go. Wow, it's like magic, dude. Okay, again, let's figure, understand how this works. Shot love. Very good question. Okay. First, let me explain how this works, and then it's very easy once you understand it. In our function, we make an array. This is the array in which we will put all the evenly divisible numbers. And then we return that array. Any questions about that? Okay, then we have this internal function that we call with num num. So if it's 24, it's 24 and 24. So num is 24, div is 24. 
Is div equal to 0? No, it's 24. OK, so 24 modulo 24, is that evenly divisible? Yes, because so there's no remainder. So we add, remember, a is empty, right? When we do this, a length is now 0, right? If it's empty, the length is 0. So it's the same thing as doing this. A of 0. Because the length is 0, so a of 0 gets div. Make sense so far? Then what we do is we call the function again, again with 24, but now with 23. And then we check again. Is 24 modulo 23 evenly divisible? It is not. So we skip this, and we call again 24 with this time 22. Is 24 modulo 22 evenly divisible? And we keep doing this check over and over until we get to 0 when we return. Yes? Uh, so the termination condition is divisible to 0 return nothing. Why did it not return nothing? Because, actually, because look, when we call this function, if we were to use the result and store it into the array somehow, Then yes, that would be a problem. But we're, we're not even using what it's returning. We're just calling it. Notice? That's why. Um, OK, now question. The result came in as from 24, 12, 8, 6. How do we reverse that? How do we get 1, 2, 3, 4, blah? Instead of starting off with num, Zero plus yeah, very good. Or you can start with 0, too, technically. Oh, wait, you can't divide by 0. <laughs> OK, let's start with 1. Uh, but first, let's change our termination case. Wait, let me break something. OK. Uh, so the termination case is when? If we're going from 0 or from 1 up, when should we stop? Should we stop at num? 24 is divisible by 24. Num plus 1. Good. So if div is greater than num, that's when we stop. For all others, we need to check. Then what we do is, if we're starting with 0, we want to grow the check, right? We want to divide by 1, then by 2, by 3, by 4. We want to go up. So we do plus 1. And we start with 1. So this time, div will be 1. Next time, div will be 2. Next time, div will be 3. Bam, 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 until div gets to when? When will this be true? 25. Good. And that's when we stop. Uh, hang on. Oh, right. I broke something. <laughs> okay. Boom. Make sense? Ah. This programming thing is starting to be make sense. Hands up if you still feel lost when it comes to recursion. It's OK. You can say it. I, I won't be mad. Really? You feel confident? If I were to give you a quiz about recursion, would you be OK? OK. All right. Listen. I'm going to continue on with objects and arrays because we can't just stay on recursion forever. If you feel like, if, listen, I'm going to be straight with you guys. A quiz is coming. You are about to have a quiz. Not today, but very soon. <laughs> if you feel like you, you don't understand this stuff, please come to office hours. OK? And we'll review, we'll review, we'll work with you as much as is possible or is needed for you guys to figure this out. OK? Uh, so let's continue. OK. Objects. Remember that objects are just containers for key value pairs. What do I mean by this? This is how you make an object. This is how you make a key value pair. A key and a value pair. Zuik. 
key value pair. In the same way, I can do obj.email. Joe at gmail.com. Obj.phone. Etc. Etc. No. That's why you have to use bracket notation for. You can do obj0. You can do that. But you have to use brackets. You can't do dot zero. Okay? Now, understood? You guys remember this stuff? Answer me this one. Uh, you know what? Profile. Facebook profile. The profile has a name of Boros. <laughs> he has friends. <laughs> One friend has a name of Medros. <laughs> Another friend, yeah, they're bro yeah, they're brothers. Has a name uh, Martyros. Sorry, with a D. Martyros, sorry, good. I teach. Martyros, yeah. Let's shut the word moment then. Okay, and let's say he's not, just so he's not lonely, let's add one more friend. OMG, okay, love. Uh, let's give them age. Uh, let's say 22. <laughs> Negative five. Yeah, we did. It's an old name, but that's winter. Okay, let's also give age to this guy. Okay, good. We're a very diverse group here. <laughs> okay, sticking to the to this. How do I get how do I reference? Listen, listen. How do I reference the second friend and then get that friend's name? And then w that this will give me the array, right? This array here. One, because it's the second one, right? This is the zero index. That's the one index. That's the two index. So let's get one dot, dot name. name. Not bad. Let's see what we get. Madio Sarian. Wait, Madio's Madio Sarian, sorry. Very good. So, if you wanted age, you do that. Or, listen, if you don't want to repeat all of this, put it into a variable, then use that variable for name and use that variable for age. Yes. Couldn't we just say profile and friends first of all? Profile. Just friend is it between both of them. Charles Katsa, Miatel? If you cancel that log, friends. Friends, just. Just friend. It will just print an object object thing. It just means it's an object. It doesn't know how to draw an object. It just says it's an object with a bunch of stuff in it. And it gives up. Uh, so if you wanted the string version, there's this json.stringify, if you want to know, which will give you the stringified version of that object. By the way, what is json? What is it? It's an object. What is stringify? 
a key. What is the value of that key? A function, which takes as argument what? An object. What does it return? A string. A stringified version of that object, which we then draw on the screen using console log. Yeah, if we do profile here, we get all that. Okay. By the way, JSON. Do you remember we've we talked about JSON at one time? When? It's an example of structured data. Remember that? It was a second lecture. Structured data. We'll talk about this later. Okay, good. Um, okay, let's do another example. Um, so let's say we have an array of bullets. Aha. No, okay, let's let's do a game. Ooh, Larusun game. <gasps> the location of the first bullet is x, you know, 10, y, 10. Why not? The location of the second bullet is x, you know, 30, y, 30. Why not? Just keep it simple. Okay, 25. Then you have characters, or people. Characters? Characters. A character has a location in the game. So the character has a location x, let's say uh, 11, y, 12. This is character A. Let's give him a name. What's like a fighting game name? I don't know. Shooting Halo. What's the guy in Halo? Master Chief. Oh. Master Chief. But it was called Master. <laughs> okay. Then we got another one. Name. Another one. What? Yoda. That's that's how you read it, right, Yoda? No. Like that? Oh, yes. Okay. X uh, is you know 55. Y. Okay. Now question. Suppose I told you that the size of a bullet, that is to say the width of the bullet, let's just call it W for width, is how many pixels? Five pixels. And the height of the bullet is another five pixel. Let's say it's a it's a square bullet. Okay, maybe not. Okay, fine. Let's keep it three, just so it's not. It's more. Okay. Same thing here. This bullet is also the same size. So the same gun was used to shoot both bullets, right? The same caliber gun. Question: Which one of these players is about to die? <laughs> Holy sh! Or, or it just died. Well, let's see. So, because the bullet is closest to master. Okay, so look, we're starting. The, this bullet here is at 1010, right? So, in a regular coordinate system, forget about canvas for a moment. In a regular. Seriously? What's one saying? Jinjum? Ah! Moment. Okay. Before we start, actually, let's do this. You know how in a usual mathematical coordinate system, this is 0, 0, and x grows this way, and y grows this way? Right? The bigger the y, the higher you are. One thing we're going to change now, just so you know. x still grows this way, but y grows that way. 
Just, just bear with I'll tell you later why. Just, so if I give you 10, 10, it's 10, 10. And if the width is 30, it's this way. If the height is you know, 10, it's that way. Okay, so y, just in your head, reverse y. Imagine y is growing this way, not that way. Just take that as a premise. Pascal Sancha? Okay. So if that's the case, let's draw this scene on the screen. So let's draw a bullet at 1010. So here's our screen. Let's make it 1010, so let's do, let's just assume it's here. Let's say that's 1010. 10, 10. The width is 5, so that's about half that, right? So maybe there. And the height is 3. So we have a bullet like this. Fine? Okay. Then we have another bullet at 30, 25. So if this was 10, that's probably 20, and that's probably 30, right? So 30, 25. So here, if this was another 10, that's 20. This was probably about 30. Sorry, this is 30, that's 30. We want 25, so about there. And the size of that bullet is the same, 5 by 3. So 5 is the width by 3. Those are the two bullets on our screen, yes? Now let's draw our master chief. Our ma oh, I need to give him a width and height. Sorry. You need size for the master chief, right? Um, OK, so the master chief has, oh wait, I have, sorry. Uh, master chief has a width of, how tall should we make him? Uh, let's have him be 10. And no, that's too fat. <laughs> um, OK. Let's have the width be 6 and the height be 10. 12. OK. Whatever. Let's deal with this. OK. So the master chief is at 11, 12. So if this was 11, uh, sorry, if this was 10, 11 is like here, right? So that's 11 there and by 12. So we go down here, and it's 11, 12. So right about there is, and how, high, how tall is he? He's six, six width, 12 height. So about there and about yeah, somewhere here. Now let's draw him. Whoa. <laughs> He just got shot in the head. <laughs> good question. Very good question. That's right. He's right. So his question is very simple. We know that the bullet has this location, but we don't want the bullet to stop. We want the bullet to keep going. Right? Ha! <laughs> huh. Okay, so first of all, what we want to do is we, listen, listen, listen. We want to change x, right? Because the, the y, the bullet, yes, it's going down a little bit, right? But that's not, but really what we want is for it to move that way, yes? And it's going so fast and the screen is so small, we don't actually have to account for gravity. It can just move forward. So what we want is to increase x in the next time we draw, the next frame of our animation, if you will. Right? OK, well, so first of all, just talking about objects, how do I reference the x of the first bullet? Zero. 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 Okay, can everyone read what's on the screen? Okay, so how do I reference the X of the first bullet? Go. Good, this will give me the X of the first bullet. 
By the way, how do I know how many bullets there are right now in the screen? Uh, bullets dot length. Bullets dot length. So game bullets dot length. Fine? Mm -hmm. Okay, now what I want to do is after printing it, I want to now change game dot bullets zero dot zero dot x and let's move it by how many pixels? Five. Five. How do I move it by that many pixels? Well, what I can do is take the original value and have that plus 5. And then console log all of this again. And we can put it in a while so it can go. There's no while here. Wait. So you see this? Right? So originally the bullet was at x, so here instead of printing it, I could have drawn it on the screen. And then after a little bit of time, I can modify x by 5 and draw it again on the screen, thereby moving the bullet by 5 pixels each time. And the faster I move and the faster I draw, the smoother the animation will be. Make sense? The, the speed at which you're drawing each frame, each picture, is called your frame rate. The faster you, you draw your frames, the smoother and more beautiful the animation becomes. Got it? Yeah, and the more pixels you have, of course, the richer it, it becomes. Yeah, oh, you mean the change? Yeah, if, you, if the frames move fast, you can move by less, and so it becomes, it doesn't do this, right? It just Exactly. So if you do 10 at a time or 15 at a time, the bullet will do this. Right? What you want is this. Right? Okay. Um, okay, very good. Uh, what else can we do here? Huh? Create gravity. Create gravity. Interesting. We can. Um, so I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll start doing this crazy, like once we actually start drawing things on the screen, for which we'll need to learn how to use Canvas, which we will discuss next week, is when you'll start actually, you can use this stuff to put things on the screen. Well, think about it this way. Here's how a game works. In a game, you basically have two parts. You have your data, which is your representation of the state. Like, who are the players? Where are the bullets? Where are the players? What's the weather like? What's the scene like? It's all the information about the game. That information is stored like this in an object with arrays and nested objects. and It's data that represents your game. The second part is a rendering function. It's a function that will look at your data and draw it on the screen. It's what I was doing here. Right? I was reading where the bullet was and I was drawing it here. Right? That's what a renderer does. It looks at the data and says the bullet should go at 10, 10 and be 5 by 3. Draws the bullet. There's a character, Master Chief, whatever, draws the Master Chief and just keeps doing this. Right? Then you wait a little bit. You then update the state. Update in that you change the position of X, you change the position of a player, you change the position of whatever, and then the second part again just draws that on the screen again. And this keeps happening. Now, the bullet, the decision to move the bullet is made by the game, right? The game decides the bullet is traveling, it needs to increase the X by whatever. But the position of the player can be determined by the user pressing a remote control, like right, left, up, jump, right? So you get the signal from the controller. You say, ooh, the user wants to go up. And the next time your, your function gets called to update this, you change the, the Y value of the player by one, so he begins his ascent. And then the second part draws that on the screen. And, and you keep doing this, and this is how games are played. Now, interesting question. Have you guys ever played like multiplayer where one person is on one computer, another person is on a different computer? And they're seeing the same thing? Like if a bullet is coming here, they see it there too. If a person dies here, they die here. Right? 
How do you, how does that work? See this data? That data gets sent from one computer to the next. And then it updates something and that new data gets sent to the next. And when the render function runs, it renders the updated state from this computer. Okay, in, in reality, you're doing something and they're doing something. In reality, it's a, it tries to merge them together. Um, for every time something changes, it remembers when it changed. And it tries to pick the last one. Make sense? So there's a merging thing there, you're right. Um, but okay, a simple one is chess. Instead of multiplayer, think of multiplayer chess. You make a move, right? The so what happens when you make a move? The data on the board changes, saying, you know, the horse went right, whatever, right? You see this in the opposition. Then the render function draws, but also that data gets sent to me. My render runs, and I see your horse went right. I then move something. State gets updated, renders. That data gets sent to you. Render runs, gets updated. And in this way, we're playing chess at the same time. Make sense? Remember how I told you data is sent as files? Like data is stored as files, right? Remember I was talking about non-structured data and structured data and file systems. Remember that? Well, it turns out you can take a JavaScript object and turn it into a string by using this json.stringify function. So what you do is you stringify your object and you send it to me. I turn it back into an object and render it. I then turn my data into a string, send it to you, you parse it, render it. And in this way, we're playing at the same time. This is how games work. Yay, congratulations. OK. Are any questions regarding arrays, forgetting games, any questions regarding arrays and objects? Make sense? Good. Let's take a photo. <laughs>